We're fortunate today to have with us Rick Heron, who's come here all the way from Minnesota. And he's an expert on prayer evangelism. We'll, we'll learn more about what that actually means. And he's a sought-after speaker, and he's an author of three books, um, which, two of which I've read, which are outstanding. Rick, welcome here to Culpeper, Virginia. Thank you very much, and God bless you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I spent 25 years as a businessman prior to joining Harvest Evangelism, and I've been with Harvest Evangelism for the last 12 years. How did we actually meet? How did God cross our path? Well, it's amazing. I, uh, I was in Hawaii, on the big island of Hawaii, and uh, all of a sudden I got a phone call on my cell phone, and it was you, <laughs> Randy Peck, and of course we'd never met before, so that was a... Uh, a divine appointment and I knew right from the beginning that it was a divine appointment and uh, as we talked and as we shared the scriptures and uh, life experiences the Lord showed us that uh, we were supposed to connect with each other and and I even mentioned to you my relationship with uh, this physician in Cape Town South Africa and um, and you have since uh, gotten to know him as well mm -hmm. so it was all done during that first hour long <laughs> phone call and we prayed together and we believed God that someday I would be in Culpeper and here I am today in Culpeper, Virginia. I didn't know anything about you a few months ago and uh, I interviewed uh, Liz Danielson on the TV show, a uh, local chaplain uh, and uh, someone who started Spiritual Care Support Ministries. Uh, we volunteered to make a website for her before the TV show aired and I ended up talking to her media person. and. And that I shared this vision for Virginia that we have to make Virginia be a bright light and about transforming communities. And it was uh, it was then that I was referred to your book, uh, The Elk River Story, which talks about Elk River, uh, Minnesota, about a community that's been transformed. Can you tell us a little bit about Elk River? Well, yes, Randy, I do have a copy of that uh, book right here with me. And uh, this book has uh, an amazing uh, anointing on it. It has gone all over the world. Uh, I've sold boxes of these in Hong Kong, for instance. And, and it just amazes me to see how God is creating such a, a, a momentum around this vision. And, and based on the prototype that was established in Elk River. You know, I went to Argentina in 1982 and I saw transformation happening there but when I came back to the uh, United States and back to my own hometown of Minneapolis and St. Paul I began talking to pastors about this concept and they said well that's fine it's happening in Argentina but show me somewhere that it's happening in North America and I'm happy to say I can now demonstrate through this book and even more than that I can I can demonstrate through the testimonies of the the mayor and the leading pastors and the leading business leaders of of Elk River that spiritual awakening and transformation is coming to their cities. So when you went to Argentina, you had an anointing that was put on you by just what was, God was doing there. And you, you told me that um, God uh, gave you a desire to see Elk River transformed. How did it get started? How did that process get started? Well, basically uh, what I found was that uh, when I went to Argentina, they talked about having God's heart of compassion for lost people. And I, at first I didn't know what they were talking about. It was a whole new concept. And I, I've since found uh, the verse in Matthew 9:36, which says that Jesus looked at the multitudes and he was moved with compassion mm -hmm. because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and, and now that, me that verse means a great deal to me because the pastors in Argentina began preaching that verse and they also laid hands on me and prayed that God would impart his heart of compassion mm -hmm. for the lost to me. And as a result of that, when I flew back to Minneapolis and St. Paul, my hometown, uh, from Argentina, I was a changed person. I was totally different. I, I believe I looked at lost people through the eyes of Jesus. And I think that's what we need in the body of Christ today. We need to, we need to have compassion for lost people, for people who don't understand the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ. God put on your heart to start the transformation in Elk River to get something going. How many pastors got involved with that at the start? Well, let me just say that I didn't uh, initially uh, start in Elk River. I went around to pastors all over the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, but that's a 2.8 million person metroplex, and it's very mm -hmm. difficult to get something going in a metroplex that large. And so it wasn't until 1995 that I actually met a, an insurance broker 
in uh, Elk River, Minnesota, and and we spent two and a half hours together over lunch, and uh, we dreamed together. It was kind of the same kind of divine appointment that you and I had, only we had it personally in in a restaurant. And and at the end of that time, he asked me about Ed Silvoso's book that none should perish, and I said, well, I happen, happen to have two cases of those books in my trunk. And he said, uh, I'll buy both cases of, of those <laughs> books. And, and so he bought them, wow. and he went around every pastor in Elk River and the surrounding communities, and he gave each pastor a copy of that book and asked them to come and pray on Tuesdays at the Elk River Library. Only two pastors took him up on that invitation. And at first I thought that was a about that outcome that only two pastors showed up but I since have looked at it in a much more positive light and I see that um, here we had a conservative evangelical pastor and a charismatic pastor who are willing to pray together and in many cities that's just not happening though the enemy has created a, a gulf between the charismatic uh, stream of the church and the conservative and mainline stream of the church and and so it's oftentimes that those two groups of pastors won't have anything to do with each other but in Elk River Minnesota these two guys purposed in their hearts to pray together and to demonstrate to to the powers and principalities over Elk River, that in Elk River, Minnesota, it was possible for these two streams to pray together. And as they broke down the walls that had divided them, just as two people, eventually other pastors, the ELCA Lutheran pastor and the United Methodist pastor and the Evangelical Free Church pastor, all other streams in that city began to come over and join this uh, relationship that was going on every Tuesday in the Elk River Library. Now, as the pastors, more pastors got involved, as they started to pray, as, we st as you started to experience unity between the churches, what happened with government and schools? Well, um, that, first of all, let me make sure we don't miss the point that there were also marketplace people that were invited. Actually, they were involved right at the very beginning. I mentioned how this insurance broker was really used by God to start the whole process. And actually, two other marketplace leaders, a, a banker and an oil uh, company owner uh, joined the pastors and essentially acted like Aaron and her and uh, with, acted with Moses and they held up the pastor's arms in intercession and um, and they as and right away that began to break down the walls that had divided uh, clergy and laity in fact those two terms don't have any biblical origin those are terms that we've built up in, in, in human traditions and and what we've come to understand is that uh, pulpit ministers are peers with marketplace ministers and when they begin when the marketplace ministers begin to feel the uh, uh, the support and the uh, encouragement and the commissioning from the pulpit ministers their uh, their joining together is amazing and also it releases the mar marketplace people to feel great energy and great enthusiasm for being mm -hmm. ministers in the marketplace every day of the week and um, and that really brought about uh, an opportunity, actually, by one of the marketplace leaders, the, the banker, Chuck Ripka in Elk River. He had a, a vision from the Lord, and he saw twice as many people in the Elk River Library on a Tuesday, and he asked the Lord, who are these people? And he gave them the names of those people. He called every single one of them, and every single person agreed to come to the Elk River Library and pray, or be prayed for. And here's who was there, the Secretary of State for the state of Minnesota, the mayor of Elk River, the superintendent of schools for uh, the Elk River School District, uh, the principal of Elk River High School, the chief of police for Elk River, the director of streets and sewers and public parks wow. for Elk River, the director of finance for Elk River, the uh, head of the Sherburne County Jail. Uh, and these are not all Christians. These are people that are just uh, public officials doing their jobs. And the church was inviting them to come to a prayer meeting and receive prayer. And it was amazing, the superintendent of schools, uh, when we said, well, tell us your felt need. And the superintendent of schools said, well, I've been trying to get a referendum passed for years and years and years. And the schools are becoming more and more run down. And we need to get some new funds in order to repair the damage and, and begin to expand the school uh, facility. And he said, but I haven't been able to get a refer referendum to pass. And, and so we laid hands on the superintendent of schools and we talked to our God about his problem and asked that that <laughs> referendum.